However, we cannot finish the party without the survivors themselves! Makoto Naegi Kyoko Ki! Um... Nobi? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I was thinking of something else there for a second. <laughs> huh. Okay. Without the survivors themselves, Makoto Naegi, Kyoko Kirigiri, and Naoi Asahina. Makoto inevitably gets handcuffed without any questioning and gets a blow to the stomach. Things don't go well for the gang, but in the end, the officers do decide to have a discussion with them first. Otherwise, Great Gozo will break you in half! Oh yeah! You know, I would be really surprised if Great Gozo is secretly Macho Man Randy Savage. You do as he says, otherwise, he will make you snap into a Slim Jim! And thus, with Great Gozu's words of wisdom, they postpone the discussion for later, when Makoto will be in much a better shape. The girls talk about the situation that they are in, and... Oi! Nobi! Nobi! Oh no. He is doing it again! Once he is in this state, it will be hard to get him out of it. We gotta do something! Hi! <sighs> you better not do that often. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's just that... I just can't help it. Oh, Kyoko, you make my heart leap with joy. You will always be my number one. I mean, look at that hair whip. Every single time she does that, I feel like... Every ounce of despair in me fading away. And you're not wrong on that one. Alright, back to the story. Next we have a moment with Makoto and Yukizome talking to each other. And I do have to say, it is a pretty interesting discussion here. She's revealed to have actually been the teacher of the students before they became remnants of despair. So there is no doubt that she has a huge baggage behind her when it comes to her students. She also says that it isn't enough just to be nice in order to bring hope and that maybe two different kinds of hope can work together to bring a more powerful hope. Which can't be seen as an interesting idea. After all, cooperation is considered a powerful weapon, even if we're talking about hope or not. One thing that I actually noticed about this discussion is that Makoto doesn't really like being called by his title. After all, he never proclaimed himself as being the ultimate hope. That is a title that Kyoko gave him in the last moments of Danganronpa 1. And... To be quite honest, that does seem to have caused a lot more harm as time went on. <laughs> and because of him being considered the ultimate hope, his sister had to be dragged into the whole Ultra Despergos incident. I mean, you call yourself the ultimate hope, you are asking for even more danger. And Junko will always come after your ass now. So, I guess I'm gonna put the blame a little on Kyoko here, even though she probably didn't think that things would go this far. And, eh, people were gonna give Makoto that title anyway at some point because, you know, main protagonist privileges and all that. Later we do get to see another character who... Uh... Oh, don't tell me. Is he, is he like Chihiro's older brother or something? Okay, thank god. I, for a second I thought Chihiro's curse was gonna reach even here. What? You mean Miyaya Gikogahara? You mean she knew Chihiro at some point? Well, now that you think about it, she is considered the ultimate therapist. And she worked on the new role program. Oh god, the Chihiro scares now! Sadly, it does seem that things are already starting to go real bad real quick. As not only did he not find dead corpses in the bathroom, but now we also have rockets to deal with! Oh god damn it, Yasuhiro! That, that, that was the crystal ball that I gave you for your birthday! I had to spend like 50 bucks for that! On my birthday too! Oh, this is bad. <laughs> Sorry, I... They are being attacked with rockets, the security guards are dead, we can't reach anyone on the outside, we have sleeping gas that knocks everyone out, and what does it all lead to? <sighs> Another killing game. 
And good Christ, Monokuma. Is that all you and Junko can think of to bring despair? Why, I think it is the most effective way of doing it. Yeah, you do have a point there. Plus, don't you just like how I handle things this time? It all happened so fast. And there's already a dead body. Huh? Yeah, as much as it pains me to say this, apparently the future Foundation members are being forced into a new killing game. And... somebody already died. Even if we knew this woman for only one episode, it is still very, very sad to see her die this way. I mean, out of all the new characters introduced in this episode, I think that she got the most screen time. And she died in such a disturbing way. It was it was actually very well done since it gave me goosebumps. What with the New World Order playing and the chandelier falling. Oh, actually, it is called Old World Order, which I do find it to be a really great rendition of the original song. New World Order has always been one of my favorite songs in Danganronpa, and I think they did a pretty good job in this one. Alright, that's it for this episode. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! <laughs> Hold on, where are you going? It looked like you wanted to end it right there. Aren't you gonna see your general thoughts about this episode or what? Well, what I can say about this episode is that it was certainly interesting. We got some of the old cast back, and we also get new characters in this, which I hope we get to learn more about. Though, in similar fashion to Danganronpa 1 the animation, we are not going to have as much time to spend with these characters as we did in the game, but I do hope for these new characters to end up being very interesting. And we are already starting with a bang as always with another killing game on the way. I do have to wonder, who is the mastermind here? I mean, besides another Junko AI that is speaking as Monokuma here, besides Makoto, Hina and Kyoko, anyone can be a suspect. Somebody had to have killed those guards, after all. I do have to wonder if Chiza was part of this. I mean, it's not too far-fetched to think that she also fell to despair, given what we learned about her that she was the teacher of Class 77 and the Remnants of Despair. And it's not, an, it's not a weird possibility that the one who died may also have been the mastermind, or maybe we're talking about the disguise? Yeah, who knows. And that's pretty much it. See you in the next episode. What? Hold on! Why are, why are you being so hasty all of a sudden? Could it be that you are hiding something? <sighs> okay. I'm gonna be honest here. I do also feel a little worried here for what will happen. I mean, we are talking about another killing game here. And we have the main three here participating in once again. Granted, I know that someone like Kyoko is not going to go down so easily, but I still have this feeling in me that something is going to happen. This is something that I have been thinking about way before I even started watching this first episode. Well, it is a natural thing to worry about someone you like. But then again, you do have faith in them, am I right? Yeah, you're right, I do. Now it is not the time to think about it. We do have to figure out who the mastermind is behind this. But before we continue, I guess we shall also see what the despair side will have to offer. So, I'll see you guys in the next part.